A significant development in how the Jets plan to use Elijah Moore the back half of his second season. If you appreciate me bringing it to you, a thumbs up is an easy way to show it. Let's take a listen from Coach Robert Sala on Elijah Moore. We're trying to find him more opportunities in the slot. Um, I think he had 27 plays last week. Uh, Elijah's a great football player. He's going to be a big reason why we win here for a very long time. And uh, and obviously, it's on coaches to continue to find ways to get him the ball, find ways to get him opportunities. And and obviously, for him to continue to, to – it's a new position because we've been playing him outside for the most part. And so we're just – we're trying to find ways to utilize all his strengths and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, to his credit, I, I know, you know, there was – and I said it before, and I know there was the, the trade request, but he's been great. I mean, he's got great attitude. He's, he is a great teammate. He, uh, his teammates love him. He's, he's always right there. And, and, I, and same thing, you, you know, when you get frustrated, you get players can get frustrated. I can get frustrated when you're just chasing production and, and things you have zero control over. But, um, but Elijah's built the right way. He's got a great mindset to him. I'll still stand by the character of which we drafted in terms of the, the young man coming from Ole Miss and, and who he is and what he represents. But uh, um, as the season goes, I think people will start seeing him uh, become more and more a fixture in the offense in terms of a, a role uh, specifically designed for him. I think this is a good move. Number one, good on Robert Sala because he could be super stubborn here and just kind of keep Elijah Moore in the doghouse permanently and say, you're going to play the X, shut up no matter what after the trade request, which I'm sure did not sit well with Robert Sala. But part of being a good leader is being humble. And two things can be true. Number one, the way Elijah Moore went about the trade request and the scuffle I practice, all that stuff we've been over, uh, dead horse, right? It, that can be pretty unprofessional for a year or two wide receiver. But also, Elijah Moore can still be correct in saying that the Jets weren't really utilizing his skill set in the most effective way in this passing offense. I think we all think both of those things are true. And with Elijah, you know, last year, a lot of his best production came from the X. But I think when he came out of college, and that's where he was so electric at Old Miss in the slot. And he's a shade under 5'10", a buck 85. He's built like a slot receiver. I think he's a guy who might struggle against physical press coverage on the outside. And you saw him being implemented into the game in Buffalo, doing all the roundabouts and the whirling dervishes that Braxton Barrios kind of does. I think they're kind of, they're ramping him up. They're having him go through the motions. And now he's got two full weeks uh, to really dive into this position. And I think on the back half of the bye week, when it's going to be Elijah Moore and Moore in the slot. And then what do you do with your other wide receivers? I think Corey Davis stays the Z. And you see Garrett Wilson take some reps at the X, but here's the, I like Garrett Wilson in the slot too. So you mix it up or, you know, you can spread them out four wide double slot, Elijah and Garrett. Uh, there's a lot of versatility here, but I think it's a good move for coach Allah. Uh, Elijah Moore as upset as we were with, you know, what feels like eons ago, <laughs> the trade request, the, the talent was never deniable. The six game stretch last year where he looked unguardable. It was real. It happened. There's untapped talent there and good at Robert Sala for finding a way to tap into it. And hey, Jets beat the Bills. Click down below. Five things we learned from that upset win. Subscribe if you are new and we'll talk football soon.